And now, <laughs> in my left corner, Andre. In the right corner, Daco. <laughs> They're gonna, you're gonna see a fight between the Redux and Mobex. No, so uh, this is our, I, I, I think this is my favorite workshop. Uh, it's React, I really enjoy React. It, it's, it's, I think I spend more time with React than my wife and children. So, um, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be awesome. The guys from Infinum are, I wanna say national leaders in modern technologies. Did I say this right? Um, and uh, what they have to share about React is I'm sure gonna be phenomenal. Uh, looks like a lot of people are excited about this workshop. It's good to see you in uh, such a big number. Um, you know, you can have a seat. It's okay, you don't have to stand. Um, and um, so Andre is going to be walking you around so you guys can be uh, you know, hands on, you can, you can work on your computers and if you have problems, you know, Dark is going to continue working and, and, and walk you through React and Andre is going to uh, help you out. So there are no stupid questions in, in, in workshops, uh, there's no you know, stupid people, uh, I, I don't know this, I suck. You know, you know, if you don't ask, then uh, that's going to be a problem. So, ask as much as you can. And make sure this guy, you know, sweats through this workshop. It's going to last two hours. You know, guys, uh, feel free to take breaks, or you guys feel free to ask for breaks. Um, I can talk some more, but you guys, maybe you want to start. Yeah, we'll turn it on the Okay, you can go. You can shut me off. Okay. Hello everyone, so my name is Darko and today we will talk about uh, React, React State Management with uh, Redux and Mobix. So yeah, this is me and this is Andre back there. And uh, we work at Infinum. Uh, Infinum is a design and development agency and we do iOS, Android, backend with uh, Rails, uh, Phoenix and Go. And we work with JavaScript, so our, our JavaScript team is, uh, has 15 members. We, do, we work with uh, React, Backbone, Ember, Angular, AngularJS, Vue, so pretty much everything. Uh, so this workshop con will uh, be in three parts. First one is React set state and general intro. The second part is uh, React with Redux, and the third part is React with Mobix. And we'll try to align it with other talks, talks in the main track. And we plan to have a break at that point. Uh, so what is App State? So uh, App State is the data which defines uh, what your application uh, does. So. Uh, if it defines if the user is logged in, or uh, if we we are creating a to-do app, uh, which to-do tests we have, are they done? Do they have a due date or something like that? And it also can define some UI uh, things like uh, which filter is on. Uh, are, are we showing only the completed task or all task or something like that? Uh, so that's the state, but uh, we also need to manage the state. So what happens when something changes? Uh, does the UI need to be updated? Uh, does some other data in some other part of the app depend on the change? And do we maybe need to uh, make an API call? So here's a uh, totally non-typical application, uh, which we'll take a look at. So. A to-do app uh, that has to-dos with the title and status, it has an active filter and it has a number of to-dos in the bottom left corner. So uh, what happens when someone clicks on the check mark to mark a ta task as complete? So first we need to uh, mark it as complete, we need to cross the text, uh, set a check mark. We need to update the counter. Uh, depending on the filter, we might need to hide or show the task. Uh, 
we also need to update the list based on that. So maybe add or remove. Maybe we, we are sorting them, so maybe there are, first we have the incomplete tasks, then complete, and at that point we need to move the task to the bottom. Uh, maybe we don't, maybe we don't have any t more tasks, so we may need to display an empty state, so some empty box or something, or emoji. And maybe uh, we need to persist that to the server. So maybe we need to say to the server, okay, this user marked the task as complete. Uh, or maybe if we are, uh, we, we are not using the server, maybe we need to save the, that data to the local storage. Uh, and that's a lot of stuff. So this is a, a part of the uh, TV show that uh, Ryan mentioned yesterday in his talk and I borrowed it. So there's a lot of stuff happening in most apps. So this is a pretty basic example with uh, to-dos, but uh, it gets much larger and much more complicated. Uh, so here we'll make a simple example project, and that's a tech conference app. So we'll have an API that serves uh, the uh, schedule of uh, talks, we will be able to favorite those talks and filter them by location. So is it in area 55 or is it on the main track? And to simplify, we, don't, we won't have any routing, although it's, it is a part of the state, but it's uh, out of scope here because we don't have that much time. Uh, also, we'll mostly skip uh, how to work with forms. Uh, uh, that's also something that's related to, to the states, but it's also a complex topic. Uh, the app won't be responsive and it will only use basic styling, you'll see that, and I'm a really great designer. Uh, and we'll assume that uh, all the browsers we're developing for support uh, the Fetch API just to make things simpler. And most of the browsers do anyway. Uh, so here's the repo with uh, all three uh, projects. So we have a project for a set state, a project with Redux, and a project with Mobix. Uh, you should clone it. Uh, all three of them were created with Create React app, but you don't need it to run it. So everything is set up al already. Uh, everyone checked out the repo? is six, although I think it should work with four. Okay, all set. Uh, so, okay, before we start, uh, I, sh I also want to make a differentiation between different types of components. This is not specific to the projects. It's not specific even to the area to React. It's uh, some. It's a. Con, uh, it's something that uh, is used through all the component-based frameworks. So, uh, to make everything scalable and easier to maintain, you should probably uh, have two types of uh, components. So, one is the container component. They usually don't have any UI. They may have one div that contains everything, but not much more. Uh, they, they're they usually uh, root components, or you might have one per root, uh, root, or maybe you will have more of them, depending on the complexity of your app. And they mostly either hold the state of their children, or they take the state from the state management and pass it to the children. And they also ha handle the state changes. So uh, the other type of uh, components, which is presenter components, shouldn't directly work with state. And uh, so the second, uh, the second type of uh, components is the presenter component, which should be inside of container components because 
they on their self don't know anything about your app. So the comp container component needs to pass both the data and the actions that are possible with that presented component. They should only have the UI, so uh, HTML, uh, classes, and uh, something like that. They should be done, so, and uh, you can even uh, use functional components in React, so components that are only a function, not the whole uh, React class. Uh, so the prerequisites for these workshops are a modern IDE or a text editor, including Vim, uh, a latest version of Chrome or Chromium, uh, Node 6, although I guess Node 4 should work also, and either NPM 4 or Yarn. I didn't test with Node 8 or NPM 5, but I guess it should work. They're very new. Uh, so, first part uh, is React plus set state. So, set state is uh, React's built in mechanism to work with state. Uh, so, there's no central state in that case. Every container component, ideally, should have uh, a state that uh, controls the, the, the component and all the children component. Uh, the, the thing that people mostly forget about when using set state that is that it's asynchronous uh, and that can lead to some problems. So uh, if you uh, if you run set states twice in a function, it's, uh, the states won't actually be uh, called twice, uh, changed twice, it, it'll, it will be changed once. Uh, but you can have a callback so you know when something changed. Uh, and uh, the component will always re-render when you change the state, unless you have a should component update function that return, returns false. And uh, in this example, we'll actually need an uh, additional library that's uh, React Add-ons Update, uh, because the, it's, uh, without it, it would be really uh, hard to update the inner parts of the state you'll see uh, when we get to, the, to it. So this is the first example here. So uh, in order to create the app, we use the create React app, but you don't need to use it. You uh, the thing you you would, you should do is go to the uh, go to the repo and check out the uh, tag uh, zero uh, uh, 1.0. So it v 1.0. And at that point, you should go to the app uh, set state folder and run npm install if you didn't already. Or yarn. Or yarn, yeah. If you need any help with anything, I can help with any yeah. things. Okay, people uh, uh, Okay, while they are setting it up, I can go through all the all the parts that are already here prepared for the sample application. So we have mock data. Uh, I prepared a JSON file in the public folder that contains some structure of the data with some talks. I didn't rewrite everything, but some of them are here. And I tried to be realistic, so this is not an ideal case. So we have a start and end time with, uh, defined in minutes from midnight, and the social for Twitter and GitHub are usernames, but for LinkedIn is a link. So this is something that we'll need to handle in the app. Uh, then we have then we have uh, styles. That's something that, uh, that I also prepared. So 
some CSS, it's not particularly pretty, but it will work. Uh, and uh, I prepared most of the presenter components since they'll be mostly the same for all three cases, but we'll change some parts of it. So for instance, a component to uh, show the social links or components to show the speaker info. So in total, six components. And I also prepared some uh, helpers. So for instance, to format the dates from the format we get from the API, or to get the links for social networks. Uh, and that's all on the tag 1.0 on GitHub. Uh, so the first step here is to load the actual data to the app. So uh, here we'll uh, create a, in utils a file that's api.js for instance and uh, we'll use fetch to load the data. So. And that's it for the loading data. So we're using the fetch API. We give it a link. We don't need any other options. So we need a get request with no additional parameters. And once that's resolved, we'll uh, pass the JSON, uh, pass it to JSON. Uh, and now we need to uh, Im import that. So we'll import that in uh, uh, app.js. So this is our uh, uh, our cont uh, container component. And we are ready to load the data. Uh, the next part. So, if you didn't have time to uh, write this, you actually have a tag 1.0, 1.1 with uh, that code. Uh, so the second part is uh, component state for the container. So. Yeah, I didn't use it yet, so we'll use it in this next step when we define the state of the component. And you didn't put that slash Oh, yeah, sorry. Exactly, thanks. Uh, so next, uh, we'll define our initial state. So we'll define the uh, constructor. Props, we need to call super. So here we can define our initial state. Uh, our initial state will have a loading flag that will be false initially. Uh, it will have docs, which can be an empty array or null. So we don't have any docs yet. Uh, we can have a filter that will define which uh, location we are looking at. So is it the main track or is, is it area 55? And we'll default to the main track. And we'll remember which talk we selected. So uh, we'll have selected talk which is null at first. Uh, okay, and now we can uh, load the data. So uh, since we don't have a global state, so our state lives in our uh, container component, we actually need to load the data here, which isn't ideal, but it will work. So 
once the component mounts, we'll make the API call and change the change the state as it as we receive the data. So here, uh, the first thing we'll do actually, we'll uh, set loading to true. That way we can uh, show a loading screen or a spinner or something like that. Uh, and then we'll load the actual data. So here, so the load data function will return a promise with the data that was received from the server. So uh, we'll set state to loading false and talks contain the list of talks we got from the API. And we are also handling the part if the API call fails, so we'll uh, set loading to false again and we'll show a message in that case. Okay, and uh, I also prepared the render function here, but it contains some placeholders, and we actually don't need this store because we are not receiving it from outside. But instead, we need to replace the store variable with this dot state, so it's using three places. And uh, from here, we actually render a few components. So we render the filter component, the talk list component, and the talk component. And some of them have uh, actions that uh, they can do. So the filter component has on filter change. Uh, it has an on filter change function. So this function will be called once the user clicks on a, on a different location. So we actually need to implement that. Uh, and that's something that happens in unfilter change functions. So we'll uh, change the filter in our state. The one thing to note here is that the object you, gi you uh, give to set state uh, will be uh, merged with the object that's already your state, so you don't need to repeat all the values that ha that already exist. Okay, and uh, we have a list of uh, talks, and uh, we want to be able to select a talk and show the details. So. We actually have an action called on talk click, which uh, needs to set our state to the value of the selected talk. Uh, and since the talk we receive here is actually the whole object we have in our state, we, it's not that good idea to 
have this in two parts of our states. So you'll actually uh, use only the talk ID here and save only the talk ID. And I prepared a helper for that. So we import the talk ID function from the utils helpers uh, module and we save the talk ID to the selected talk property in our state. And the uh, most tricky part of this here is when you open a talk, you will have a favorite button. So you want to mark a talk as favorite because you want to attend it, for instance. Uh, for that, we'll, uh, we have a f in, uh, every talk has a favorite uh, property, which can be either true or false. Uh, and uh, we will need to uh, flip it. Uh, once the, this function is called. And uh, we'll be able to do this only on the selected talk, so not on any talk, but only on the selected one. And for this, we'll actually need the uh, additional library. So we'll import update from uh, React add-on update. So this uh, module, by React, uh, but it's not part of uh, the part of React, and we'll use it to change a property deep in our state. Uh, and here, first, we'll get our object for the selected talk. So here we go to the talks array and uh, use the find uh, method on, on array to find the selected talk. So we compare the talk ID of the current talk with uh, the talk ID of the selected talk. So we iter iterate through the array. And next, we actually need to update the state. So uh, here we'll use the update module. So, uh, so that's something that's kind of specific, a specific sy syntax. So basically, we tell it to change the talks property with some instructions, with something that uh, the update function will return. Okay, so uh, as, as I said, we want to change the talks property uh, and there we want to change the index where the selected talk is located and we want to merge the existing state with the new state which has only the favorite property which is uh, different from the previous state. So we set a new favorite value to the opposite of the current value of uh, the selected stock.
and that's it for the container components. Next, so we can actually run this example now. So you can uh, run npm start and something should open in your browser, hopefully. Okay. If you're using uh, React DevTools extension for Chrome, you can actually inspect your components and you can see which state they have and which uh, properties were uh, given to them. So we can see here that the app component has docs, loading is false, nothing is selected, and uh, filter is set to main. Uh, but we don't show the, the talks yet because we didn't define which talks to show. As we have the filter, we need to take this into account. So uh, what we need, need next are uh, selectors. So selectors are basic functions that do your data preparation. So uh, since I have uh, list of talks and I have a filter, my selector will get those two and it will return a new list that, uh, that will uh, be filtered based on the filter. So here we'll filter the task, uh, tasks array and we'll compare the location of the every talk with the filter. And if we go to the, okay. It's filter of undefined. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not stock, it's this. And we have our list of uh, talks. And we actually can change it. So we have a main area and area 55 here. But we still can't click on it. Okay, uh, next thing is here is uh, showing the date. So the date. How did you fix this? Uh, uh, I put a uh, uh, talk here instead of this. It's uh -huh. So next thing we want to change is to show a formatted date here. So currently we are showing minutes since midnight, which isn't really useful. Uh, so what we'll do here, we'll go to the components, uh, talk item, and here uh, we'll import the format time uh, method from the helpers. And we'll wrap the values with it.
and now we have the formatted date here. Uh, we also need to do something similar with uh, social networks because, as I said, uh, our API data is not ideal. So, in some cases, we get usernames, in some cases, we get uh, links. Uh, and I prepared helpers for that. So, format Twitter, format LinkedIn, format GitHub, which return an object with username, display name, and link. And we'll use the link and display name to show it to the user. three functions to our component and then we'll wrap our values with it. part is uh, we want to show the selected talk so we actually uh, need to uh, prepare this variable to be the correct value so uh, here we actually can reuse the same thing we did in on f uh, click so we can filter the talks based on the talk ID And now you can click and see the data. But again, we have the time uh, formats wrong here, so we'll need to update this in the talk uh, uh, component. And we have the same thing for favorites. So we want to show the favorites. And so we want to have this correct counter here in the bottom. We can actually favorite it already. Here we just filter based on uh, the favorite value. So if it's true, we want the element to the object to be in the array. So when you favorite something, you get the correct counter. And that's it for actually for the React set state. So uh, if you didn't manage to write something, you have uh, a tag 1.3 which, which contains all the code for it. Uh, and one thing to note here for set state is that uh, I guess since React 15, there is something called functional set state. And that's the uh, set state function which can receive a function instead of an object. So instead of the object which will be merged with the current uh, state, 
you can give it a function which will receive the old state and you, you need to return the new state. So here's an example. So increase counter uh, is using the set state in the old way. So you return a new object, you call it with a new object that has a counter, counter that's different. And decrease counter is the new way of doing it. So with a function that receives the previous state and props, and you, you need to return the new state. And uh, so a set state works, obviously, but I'm not sure it's a good idea to actually use it because it doesn't really scale well. Because you need to have a master component because uh, a component contains your data. So you'll either have one component that contains your routers, your other components, and everything else, and that's something like a GUT component, so it controls everything, and that would be really uh, big. Uh, or you would need to have some smaller independent containers, but they couldn't share data between them, and that's deal breaking deal breaker in most cases. Okay, so, uh, we can actually make a break if you want. Yeah. If anybody needs Red Bull, just I'll bring it for you just okay. sure. Then uh, Redux, but it's also growing quite quite fast. So it overtook Relay, for instance, and it's uh, getting closer closer to Flux. And uh, an interesting thing to note here is that of those four major uh, state management libraries for React, only Mobix is not backed by Facebook. So Facebook built Flux and Relay, and Redux is uh, the author of Redux is the core member of uh, React team, and he works at Facebook. So uh, what are the adv advantages of one or the other? So Mobix is faster because uh, it's easier control to control when something re should re-render. And if you need to re-render less, then everything gets faster, of course. Uh, on the other hand, Redux is uh, easier to unit test because it's using reducers which are pure functions and you can easily e uh, isolate them to test. Uh, Redux is smaller because it doesn't have to doesn't need an engine that decides when something should uh, be re-rendered. But that's why it's, uh, it can be much slower in some in instances. Uh, and uh, if you ever used uh, Redux, you know that it has a lot of code. So if you want to add an action, you need to change at least three files. Uh, on the other hand, Mobix has much less boilerplate, so it's more, it uses more I would call magic, because it does a lot more stuff for you. Uh, and it's more flexible, but, uh, and I'll come to that later. So Redux has some limitations that you need to work with. Uh, but because of those limitations, uh, Redux actually supports some interesting features like time travel. So uh, in Redux, you can replay or rewind all the actions that happened. So. Since your state is immutable, you know what state was there at any point in time. Uh, Mobix is simpler, uh, has simpler uh, async actions because you just do async stuff as you would usually do. Uh, while with Redux, you need to have uh, two or three or more actions to handle everything. Uh, and since Redux is easier to unit test, it's actually easier to debug, debug also probably because also you have pure functions, you can uh, isolate everything and uh, figure out if, uh, where is the problem. And uh, I think this tweet actually describes the difference uh, quite nice. So uh, it uh, mostly depends on your preference. Do you like uh, magic or are you fine with boilerplate? So uh, with Mobix there's really not a lot of code, but there's a lot of magic and it might bother you if you don't know what's exactly happening. So for instance, if you, if you were on the talk about uh, data flow in JavaScript yesterday, 
the, the presenter showed the a simple counter app, so it had a plus and a minus and a counter, and he implemented that with uh, Flux and Redux. Uh, Andre actually uh, thought this was interesting, so he tried to implement it with uh, Mobix, and it took him four lines of code. Uh, yeah, and three minutes. So. Yeah. Uh, you can show it if you want it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so both Mobix and Redux, although they are mostly used with uh, React, they are not React dependent, so you can use them uh, without React. Uh, and Mobix, for instance, has a first class uh, binding for Angular, and uh, there are there are also uh, some forks that and. Uh, ports that work uh, with uh, Python or JVT, so Google's Java something. Uh, okay, so next part is uh, Redux. So uh, the main thing about Redux is that it has only one central state, so you're not allowed to have multiple states. Uh, and it, this example, uh, and in most, most uh, times when you use it, you'll need three things. You'll need to, uh, Redux, React Redux, which is a binding for React, and if you are doing some async actions, you'll need some additional libraries. In this case, uh, we'll use Redux Tank. Uh, okay, so uh, there are a few concepts that you need to know about Redux. So the first one is sto the store. A store is a plain JavaScript object that uh, contains your application state. Uh, the second one is an action. An action is actually a payload that uh, uh, that contains the information needed to change your state. So an action has a type and some additional data that will be used by a reducer. Uh, a reducer is a pure function, so it has no side effects. It will always run. It will always give you the same results for the same input. Uh, the, so the reducer gets the current state and it gets the action and uh, this, the only job it has, it, it needs to return the new state. So this is the gist from the official repo actually. So we create, uh, this, uh, we import uh, Redux here. This is our reducer, so it gets the state, the initial state is zero and it gets an action. And based on the action type, it will either increase the state or decrease the state. All return the current state if the action is unknown. Uh, and here we are using store subscribe, so actually when something changes in the store, this function will be called and it will all, all output the current value. And this is how we change the, uh, the value. So we dispatch an action of the type increment or de decrement. So let's go to the code. So for this example, we also use create React app to create it and uh, install additional Redux, Redux, React Redux and Redux Tank. And the initial app is uh, at uh, tag 2.0 on GitHub. Uh, and we still ha are using the same mock data, so the data JSON that contains list of the talks, uh, the same styles, so the same pretty app, as we saw before. Uh, the same uh, presenter components, so the information about the speaker, about the talk, list of the talks, and uh, talk summary. And the same utils, so the util which can return us the talk ID or some uh, social network info. Uh, and the first thing we'll do here actually is we'll make a list of actions we, we plan to support. So, uh, okay, so we can go back to the root of the repo and go to the app Redux. And if you didn't already, you should uh, run npm install. Uh, okay, let's close this. So in App Redux, we'll actually uh, create a file called constants. Uh, so th this file, can you, you can use it for 
other constants, but in this case we'll use it for the names of the actions, because action names should be unique, and uh, the best and most scalable way is to define them in one place. Uh, and if you don't have any particular convention of naming, you can always name your constant. Uh, you can put the same va value to your constant as its name. And here we'll actually need to, to achieve the same functionality we had in the previous example. We'll net need uh, six actions. Uh, three of them will be used for data loading. So we'll need to dispatch an action when we start loading the data. We'll need, we'll need an action uh, at the point where, when we receive the data, and we'll need an action if the loading fails. So we'll actually copy this and uh, add. So those are the three actions for loading. Uh, and this, uh, the other three uh, actions will be for toggling the uh, 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 the uh, filter, toggling the favorite state, uh, an, an action for uh, selecting the talk, and a, uh, action for changing changing the filter. And that's uh, all for uh, defining the action names. Uh, okay. uh, next part is defining the action, the actions. So uh, once we have the constants, we'll create the actions file. which should import the constants names. Do you usually place those files in the root folder? Uh, uh, so the question is, do we usually place those files in the root folder? Uh, the, the answer is no. There's actually two ways to do it, to be scalable, I guess. One is to have uh, separate folders, so an actions folder which contains multiple action files and a users folder which has multiple user files, Mo they mostly match one another, so if you have an action file you will have a re user file and um, the constants are mostly in one file because uh, that's the easiest way to make sure they don't over... Sorry? Yeah. Okay, and now, uh, so defining the synchronous actions is quite easy. So that's basically a function that returns an object. Action will return an object which is a payload, which has a type of talk select, and it has some additional information that will be used by the reducer. Uh, we'll do similar thing for toggling the favorites and uh, changing the filter. But 
in this case, we don't actually need uh, any additional info because we are uh, toggling the favorite state of the selected talks. So we already have all the info we need. This is a simple part. Now the more complex part is uh, the asynchronous action. So here we'll actually need uh, three similar functions which return our payload. So we have three functions. One is used on start, one when the data is received, and one when if an error happens. And all, all of them return an object with different types. So once the reducer function is called, it will know what, it should, what should happen at that point. But uh, there's no logic here yet, and that's something that we need to implement next. So we are loading the data here with the fetch method and we need to call this patch with the new actions that need to be uh, created. And we need to do, do this in three places. So once when we start loading the data, once when we receive the data and once if the error happens. Once we have the actions ready, the next step is writing the reducer. So in, since this is a simple application, uh, we'll have only one reducer. Uh, it will import the same constants because we need to support the same actions. We'll define the initial state. So again, we'll have uh, the loading flag, uh, list of talks, which is null until we get it, uh, selected talk, uh, and filter, which will be uh, main initially. And uh, the only thing we need to expose here is one function. And it receives a state, the current state, which should default to initial state if it doesn't exist yet, and the action. And here we can use uh, switch case. So based on the action, type 
we all do s some different things. So if we start uploading the data, we'll return the same state, but we'll update the loading to true. So this is the object spread operator, which isn't standard yet, but it's close to being implemented in, in browsers. But if you're using uh, Babel or some other transpiler, you'll have it. Uh, same thing for uh, loaded. But here, we'll set false, and we'll set talks to action.data. So we pa pass the data in the action. And in case an error happens, we'll just set loading to false. And that's it for the asynchronous actions. They're quite simple. Uh, the ne next is uh, selecting the talk. Uh, here we'll do something similar. So we'll just uh, change the selected talk value to the action talk. Uh, and in case of the filter change, uh, we change the filter to action to filter. And I saved the most complex one to, for the end. Uh, in this case, we actually need to know which talk is the selected one, and we need to change a property that's inside of an array, inside of an object. And we don't, we are not allowed to change it, actually. We need to cop make a copy of the whole state because of that. Uh, so first, I'll actually uh, get the selected talk object. Uh, and for that, I prepared a helper. So at this point, I have a select talk object here. Uh, and now I, I can figure out at which index it is in the, in the state. And now I can make a copy of the talk with the changed property. So uh, equals. Uh, so I create a copy of the selected talk object with the favorite property that's, that was updated. And in the end, we need to return the new state. So we'll do this, but we need to update the talk array. And for that, we'll use uh, uh, array spread and uh, slice. So we'll actually uh, get the per first part of uh, the talk array. So up to the new, up to the selected talk, and put it into a new array, and then we'll add the the selected talk, but the new instance of the object, and after that we'll add the rest of the talks. Uh, 
so this is the way to do it if you are not using any additional libraries. Uh, if you are working on a more complex app, you'll probably use some helper libraries that will make this easier on a larger, larger scale. Uh, but that's basically what happens in the background every time. And uh, the convention is to return the original state if, if the uh, uh, action type is not recognized. So those are the reducers. The next part is the actual store. So we know how the data should change, but we don't have the data yet. So since we don't, unlike a set state, we are not um, dependent on the component anymore. So we'll actually initialize the state and load the data from the our main main entry point into the app. So this is what's needed for creating the store. So we, we actually need two things from the Redux. So one is create store method. And since we are uh, doing asynchronous actions, we need the, the Redux tank library, uh, which is a middleware. So we actually need a middleware helper also for Redux. And at that point, so we use the create store method uh, the first argument there is the reducer uh, function uh, and the second argument is the middleware. And at this point we can load the data. So we can do store, dispatch, load data. And what this will do, it will call, call the load data function in our actions, which will dispatch a load start which will change the loading to true, and then it will do fetch. And either uh, succeed and call load, load done, or fail and lo call load error. And once any of them happens, the store will be updated. Uh, okay, next. Part is uh, the next part is co uh, connecting of the store to to the our components. So uh, this is mostly done in the way uh, that we wrap our application in a provider component. Uh, which takes care of uh, transmitting, uh, of uh, passing the data through all the components that are children of the uh, provider. That's everything we need to do here in in our initial state of initial part of the app. Uh, everything else will happen 
uh, in our components. So here we have our app, app.js and we'll need some Redux stuff to work. Uh, first one is uh, the connect helper, which will wrap the application, uh, the return the uh, component. But on its own, it won't do anything, but because we didn't tell it what we actually need from the state. So we'll define a function called uh, map state to props. Which uh, receives the state, so, so our store. And it needs to return an object which will be passed as props to the our app component. And at this point, we can, uh, and this is the first argument to the connect helper. And at this point, we can access those through uh, props here. So we actually can have uh, loading, docs, and uh, filter. Uh, the next part is uh, getting some uh, computed properties. So uh, we, we need a list of uh, filtered talks, for instance, or the select, selected talk. So for this, we'll use the already prepared helpers. And we also need uh, another function that will prepare our actions to be called from when something happens. So this is usually called uh, map dispatch to props because we have a dispatch dispatch method from uh, Redux, and we will when we prepare the actions, we'll pass them through the props to the component. And this is passed as the second argument to the connect. Uh, and at this point, we need to import our actions. And we are using the bind actions creators function from Redux to make this change. We could do it manually, but it's not worth it because this can do it for us. And now we can use uh, the actions here also. 
So, for instance, when our uh, when we get a callback when filter changes, a fil on filter change function is called. So this is here and to do to implement this, it's quite simple. So we just uh, use the function that's uh, already in the props. And what this will do, this will dispatch the action called filter change, which will call the reducer and the reducer will change the state. The same thing is for on five click. But we don't need any arguments here. And on talk click, so when we want to select a talk, Uh, we again uh, receive the whole talk object, but we only want to use the talk ID here. Uh, so we, we are using a helper function for that. And, uh, and that's it for uh, connecting the components with the store. Uh, next part is the selectors. So we have some data, so we have a list of talks, we have a filter, but we don't have a list of uh, filtered talks. Uh, so we can use some selectors for that. So a selectors file will contain a function, uh, some functions uh, that will help us transform our state to something that's usable in some in the cases we need it to. And here we'll do something similar that, uh, to the thing we did before. So we'll get our state uh, that contains talks and we'll filter them. So we'll uh, iterate through them and compare the talk ID of the talk, the current talk, with the selected talk. And this uh, Actually, we have use find here because we need only one value, not an array. And we'll do similar things to uh, get the list of favorites. So we'll return, uh, we'll use state talks and we'll filter uh, all talks that. Uh, that have favorite set to true. And the third thing we need is a, a list of talks. So, a list of all talks based on the filter that's selected. So it will return the array of all talks which uh, uh, that match the filter. So talk location is equal to the filter. And now we can go back to our container app, uh, container component, and import this. And uh, to use it, we actually can use the map state to prop, map state to props. So we'll have a list which is we'll call we'll call list talks and give it 
the state and state dot filters filter and uh, we also need to figure it and select a stock and now they are available in the props so list for its selected stock and we can remove the placeholders here and at this point we should be able to run this so npm start Again, stop. Okay, once this is ready, uh, that's basically it. So we have a functioning uh, application. The next thing we can do is uh, we can add uh, Redux Dev tools. Uh, so we don't actually have time for that. We need to move on to Mobix, but uh, uh, it requires a few uh, changes in the code, few lines. And you can install the Redux DevTools in your, as an extension in uh, Chrome. And what you can do there, you can uh, see every action that happens in your app and what is the payload of the action, how does it influence the state. And you can move uh, through the previous versions of the state so you can time travel. So if you click something wrong or type something wrong, you can go, go back or uh, that's, that allows you actually uh, hot reloading. So if you uh, change something in your code, uh, it will be actually possible to replace the component you changed and uh, Redux can replay the actions that happened and you can see the exact state where you were before without refreshing uh, the page. Do you have some time for questions maybe? Uh, yeah, we'll have a pause. So you can ask them, or if, yeah. Okay, so this is the set state, and we have an error here. The user. Oh. And the naming. Okay, this is embarrassing. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll cheat a little. Okay, basically we get the same app as we did before. So you can uh, uh, click through the uh, talks, you can favorite them, you can filter, and everything is the same, but uh, it's done in a more uh, scalable way. So just to wrap up the Redux part. So when you want to scale Redux, you still need to keep one store, but you can have multiple reducers. Uh, the important thing to note here is that uh, as you use more reducers, you need to nest them and your data will also be nested in the same way. So if you have uh, your state which contains a tox reducer, uh, 
uh, if you have a tox reducer, your, your state will also, also have a tox property which will contain the state which is controlled by this reducer. Uh, and as I answered the question before, there's two ways to organize your code. So either with reducers and actions folders, or with folders based on uh, functionality. So for instance, you have you can if you are doing a work, uh, web shop, you can have an orders folder which contains an orders reducer, orders actions, and some components that are related to the orders. Uh, and the important thing to note in Redux is you should never mutate the state. So you, you should never change the existing state. You should always return a new state. Uh, to make this easier and, and less error prone, you can use immutable JS. It's a library by Facebook just for that. Uh, so this is the link. It has uh, some, uh, it has multiple structures, data structures like list, map, set, or record. It supports nesting them, and you can easily query them and change something deep inside without uh, worrying about all the things we did before. Uh, there's also a Redux form, so it's a library for uh, doing uh, forms. It also uses immutable JS. It supports synchronous and asynchronous validations, and you can use uh, you can even create wizard forms. And uh, the interesting thing here is uh, this is a tweet that contains the Redux source code. Of course, it's a little, uh, it removes some useful parts, but basically that's everything you need to run Redux without uh, uh, React. Okay, and we can take a pause now and we can continue in a few minutes. And we had some questions. Yeah. Yeah. But Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so basically, uh, I was wondering. Uh, so, every function that is related to talks uh, should be placed in. So, it's, if I have some function that does some heavy computation on mm -hmm. talk, on one on single talk object, so where, where should I put it? Uh, that's something that uh, Redux doesn't define. So. That's why we use uh, selectors. So selectors are something that's not defined in Redux, but it's a convention that happened. So this is something that's that's something you need, obviously, to get the your filter data, but it's not something you can define either in action or reducer, because the goal is to have the store with just the basic data, and everything else should be calculated dynamically when you need it. Okay, so, so where, where would you put it? So, you, let's, let's look at the code. You have, yep. you have some folders, so you have your, you, you would create new file or something like that. Uh, yes, yeah, so here's the example views. So okay. Okay. we have selectors and it expo exports three functions that we used. Okay. Uh, of course, when you want to scale, you would also have multiple selector files probably. Okay. So uh, another question is, if there is a third party, party library that, that um, does not use immutable uh, and has some complicated objects with functions attached to objects and then but it's a, it's a great library, it has some really really cool stuff and I want to use it. So how do you how do you manage something like that with the Well Do you, do you have such such situation? Uh, I didn't use Redux that much. I used it on one client project and some okay. playing around, but uh, I think most of the libraries, the popular libraries have a Redux version. Just because, exactly because of that reason, because most of the libraries won't work out of the box with Redux. Because Redux is a new paradigm that wasn't that used that much before and everyone needs to adapt, adapt to it. Okay, uh, and the third and the last question. Mm -hmm. So let's suppose that I created a single application 
that, uh, that is one that, that presents one single talk uh, fantastically. Okay, so I want to create another application that presents multiple talks. Okay, so let's say that, that this talk component is something that I, I would like to use in multiple projects. Okay, and it can be the same logic or something like that. And it's great, it works fine, and I'm using Redux in that. Mm -hmm. So I have another application that imports that talk. So how, how would you structure this whole uh, reducer's uh, app? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, the components shouldn't care about the state. So the components should be, you should be able to move them to another project. And for the state, well, there's no simple answer to that. So you should uh, structure your state, your state, so it makes sense. So in this case, the talks would be one reducer. The, the speakers might be the second reducer, and uh, yeah, that might work for the other app, but it might not. That's yeah. depends on the app. Basically, I'm just trying to, to achieve uh, to, to have multiple widgets, mm -hmm. which I can uh, compose later into simple application. So I can have maybe nested widgets or something like that. So this is a simple, simple example, but it can grow, it can grow. Uh, yeah. So basically, what I'm asking is, uh, how how should I structure this reducers store state? Is it? Is, have you ever seen any project mm. a similar problem or something? Uh, one way to do it would be to have one reducer per widget, but that might create uh, duplication of data. Probably would if you are using the same data. Uh, the other ways would be to have one reducer per component just to handle their stuff and have some other reducers to have the common data. So. You would have one reducer for talks, and the other reducer would be, uh, I don't know, talk list, which would contain a filter, for instance. And yeah, that's uh, to, without going to any details about what they exactly do. It's hard to say. Yeah, but, yeah. but it look, looks to me that there is a lot of blue code you have to. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, the thing about Redux that it has a lot of boilerplate code and it has some restrictions to get there. So, to be that strict, it has some limitations. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, uh, should we continue now? Here we have 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, okay, then we need to hurry a little bit, but uh, the Mobix part will, will be faster. So, uh, Mobix is the state management library that we use the most, actually. Uh, and uh, we use it since August, I think, so it, close to a year now. Uh, so what's specific, uh, what's special about Mobix? So Mobix, unlike Redux, doesn't define how many stores you have. So you can either have one store or, mul or multiple stores. Uh, and if you're working with Redux, you will need two things to install. So Mobix and Mobix React, which is the binding for React. Uh, and uh, the main philosophy behind Mobix is that anything that can be derived from the application state should be arrived automat automatically. So you, sh you, you should have only the minimal uh, needed data in your store and you should uh, calculate, calculate everything else automatically. Uh, there are a few concepts here. Uh, so the first one is the observable. Uh, the observable is your state. So if you, if you have a plain JavaScript object you, and you mark it as observable, it becomes a state, your state. So that's, for instance, a list of to-dos. Uh, second uh, concept is an action. So an action is a function that uh, will change the store, uh, the state. Uh, so for instance, when a user clicks on a checkbox on a to-do list, uh, this action will flip the completed uh, property. 
Uh, the third thing is uh, computed property. So those are values that are, are uh, derived from this uh, state. So for instance, in the uh, uh, conference app, that would be a list. Uh, that would be a list of favorited talks. So you don't need a selector; you just define a comput computed property. Uh, we'll see that in the examples. And the fourth one is the observer. And the observer is actually the thing that consumes your your data. So that would be a React component or can be anything. So it can be any function that will be called when something relevant changes. Uh, and this is the flow. So when an action happens, the state will be changed, uh, which will uh, trigger the updates in computed props. And based on the state changes and computed props changes, the observers, observers will, will be triggered. Uh, the thing, the main difference between Mobix and Redux, and the reason why Mobix is faster, is because uh, it won't update your observers without if it knows that your observers are not using the data. So if you have a talks object which contains, uh, uh, for instance, uh, a title and location, and your component uses that talks objects object but shows only the title if you change the location uh, it won't be re rendered because mobix will know that you didn't use that property and it it does it automatically so you don't need to worry about it so this is the gist so compared to uh, redux so we import the observable and outer end functions we create a store so we have an object which has a a counter property which is zero initially. Outer run is a function that will call your function. So we have defined another function here in, inside which just console logs the counter. And outer run will call it every time something relevant changes. So when the counter property changes, it will call it. And when we want to change the state, we just change it. So we increase the counter, increase it again, decrease the counter, and the console log function will be called after every change. And that's it. So for, co for comparison, this is the example with Mobix and Redux. So as you can see, Mobix has a lot less boilerplate, but it has magic. So it, there's no obvious way how this value is updated. So why this works. The data is mutable, right? Uh, yeah, so in Mobix, all data is mutable. Uh, in fact, it uh, wouldn't work if it would be immutable. Uh, and it encourages you to use references instead of copying the data or anything else. Uh, one uh, other thing that uh, Mobix, uh, that you can use with Mobix are decorators. So this is a proposed feature in JavaScript, and it, it's a feature that already exists in TypeScript. TypeScript in fact, uh, Angular is also using it. Uh, so this is a syntax that can uh, sh give you a nicer look. So instead, uh, instead of uh, wrapping your array in, oops, in observable function, you can say at observable list equals an array. Or instead of uh, wrapping your function into a computed property, you just say at computed get complete, and that's it. So it is much more more uh, readable, but that's completely optional. So you can use it without you, you can use Mobix without uh, decorators. So this is the third example. In this case, we also use create React app, but we use another. Uh, a, uh, op option here called scripts versions, which with the custom React scripts va uh, value. Uh, what the, this uh, basically does, it uh, sets up the create React app, but enables decorators. And after that, we uh, installed Mobix and Mobix uh, React. And again, in this example, we have the same mock data. Uh, so, okay. This. We have the same data, so uh, our public folder contains the JSON with the list of talks. Uh, we have the same styles, uh, the same utils, so for formatting social networks and formatting time, and the same components. Oops. 
uh, and the first thing we need to do here is uh, create the models. So since we don't need to have one central store and it doesn't need to be a, a plain JavaScript objects, we actually can think in a more ob object-oriented way. So we, we can have classes. So for instance here, we can create a speaker class and a talk class. And we, we can have a one, uh, uh, one class that's our state, which contains all others. Okay. So we can create a new folder, for instance, here called state. In, inside of it, we'll create uh, index.js, which will contain our main uh, state. And we, create, we can create uh, speaker JS and uh, talk JS. And here, uh, so for speaker, we can uh, import some Mobic stuff. So for co the computed property, I'll already explain what it does. Uh, uh, what export observable actually does is it works like the export or uh, uh, assign function in JavaScript. So it takes one object, you give it another object, and what it does, it uh, merges them together without changing the reference. Uh, and why, why, this is, why this is important in, with Mobix is because it, uh, Mobix has two limitations, and one of them is you, you are not allowed to add new properties to an object without uh, uh, it's not export, it's, it's extent. Uh, you are not allowed to uh, add uh, properties to an object without extending that observable, because uh, if you do that, uh, Mobix won't be able to track the changes, it won't be observable. And we'll actually import some helpers here. And we'll create just a regular class. It will uh, get some data and we'll just uh, extend the object instance uh, with that data. That's uh, cur uh, in this situation. This is the easiest way to get all the data uh, that we pass to it and make it observable. And now we can do a computed Twitter. Uh, get Twitter. So we we create a getter and return a format Twitter with uh, this. Dot social. Uh, uh, you'll see a warning here because uh, decorators are still experimental features, so that's why it's here. But you can ignore it. Okay, and that's all we need for the speaker. So we have all, all, all the initial data right here, and we'll have some additional computed properties once we get to, the, to them. And uh, for the talk, we'll actually do some more stuff.
So in this case, we'll actually uh, need the speaker class. So since our talk contains the speaker, we'll, the talk uh, class will actually create a speaker instance. And we'll also need to format some dates and some other stuff. And here we will do similar thing as in the speaker, but uh, one thing we don't have in our data is the favorites flag. But we need to add it so we can track it. So we'll do this. Okay, same warning. So what this basically tells us is that the all talk instances will have a favorite property which will be observable. And we'll return uh, add uh, ID uh, computer property so we can use it in other parts of the code so we don't need uh, the helpers anymore. And we'll format our dates, uh, which we display in the uh, in the components. And that's our to uh, talk class. So the next thing is creating our wrapper state. Uh, so uh, here it will import observable computed. And here we'll also have some data. So we'll have uh, observable uh, uh, loading, which will initially be false. We will have observable uh, talks, which are initially null. Uh, selected talk. And uh, filter. Uh, and we'll also add some computer properties just to make uh, stuff easier for us later. So we created two computer properties for things. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so before we used selectors, which were just regular functions to get our favorites and lists, and now we are using computer properties. And why this is different is because well, it sits here with our data, so it probably makes more sense. Uh, so we are not uh, separating our data and our behavior. Uh, that's one thing. And the other thing he here is that this is cached. So once this is uh, accessed the first time, it will be calculated. But we can access it multiple times. But if nothing relevant changes, so if not, uh, no favorite flag changes in any of talks, this won't be recalculated. So this also gives us uh, another performance boost. And that's all for the state, so uh, all for the mo models. So next thing is uh, loading data. Uh, for this, we'll actually create a uh, util.
and here we'll also change our loading flag as we load the data. But this is much simpler now because we can type uh, store loading equals true, and that's it. Uh, and again, we can load our data, uh, parse the response, and then process the data. So either that or failure. If the ha failure happens, we'll say store loading equals false. But if we'll suc we succeed, we'll say store docs equals data and store loading equals false. Uh, action. Uh, okay, uh, actually we'll do something more here. We'll map the data and create talks right away. New talk. So that way we all already have the class instances in the store right away. Uh, and to use this, we'll just import our uh, store. Uh, we'll import uh, load data from utils. Uh, we'll create the store. And I'll actually add a global store here, just so I can demo it easier, and so I can change the store from the console later. And now we just load data with the store. And that's it. And we need to pass the store to our container component. Uh, similarly to uh, Redux, there's actually a, a similar component here with uh, Mobix, so a helper component which can wrap through uh, the all your whole application, and it can receive the store, and it can it will make sure all of the components that need it can access the store at any time. Uh, so this is the loading data, loading of the data. So we have and everything we need here. Uh, next thing is actions. So uh, with actions, it's also much simpler because we have our container component here, and if we click on a uh, talk, all we need to do is uh, get our state uh, action store and uh, set the selected talk to the talk. Now, uh, now in previous two examples with uh, set state and uh, Redux, we actually assigned the talk ID to the selected talk. But with Mobix, they actually encourage you to use the references instead of some other values. So they encourage you to just set the same reference here instead of using computer property somewhere else to get the selected talk. And on favorite click, we just do this props store, select talk, uh, favorites equals uh, the opposite of it. And for the filter, this props uh, state uh, store filter equals filter. Uh, and that's it for the actions. So this, this is quite simple uh, compared to, for instance, Redux. Uh, next thing is observers. So in order for the components to be updated, uh, when something changes, we need to mark them as observers. That way, they'll, the Mobix will know that it needs to keep track of what's being used there. So we can go through all the components here. Uh, import uh, observer from uh, Mobix React and wrap everything with it. Uh, we could use decorators here, but uh, there's actually no need for them. 
Uh, and uh, another thing that might not be obvious, uh, but makes sense when you think about it, uh, you should, in order to improve performance, you should have at, at uh, uh, the more you observers you have, that, that's better, because uh, the re-render will be more granular, granular, granular. So. If something changes that's re relevant for the social component, there's no need to re-render the talk because the social component can uh, take care of it itself. And finally, we also need to set the container component as, as observable, but in this case, we can use the decorator. So this is a plus. Uh, and at this point, we actually can uh, remove those placeholders here because our list is actually store.list. Selected talk is store dot selected talk and favorites is store dot favorites because we already defined the computed properties that that are needed for this and now we should be able to run this. Here's an example of using, uh, not using uh, decorators. So a decorator is basically a function that wraps around your component here. And now, now observes. Okay, that's um, okay. Something wasn't something missing in the repo, I think. Uh, okay, so we can use we can use this all instead. Okay. But we actually don't have time. Sorry. Uh, and uh, that's basically it. So if we run the application, you should be able to run it from GitHub. Uh, everything should work the same as the previous two examples. So you have a list of talks, you can click on a talk, get details, you'll get uh, a favorite button which you can click, it will show you favorite uh, talks on the list, it will show you the counter of count of favorites, and you'll also get the, a list of social networks based on the computer properties. Now. If you think about uh, the way we did this, so we added uh, we added some codes in our uh, uh, methods inside of the component, you might think, well, this is not scalable, this is dangerous because we are changing our states anywhere, anywhere we want. Well, there's actually a strict, strict mode in Mobix. Basically, what you do is you just uh, uh, import uh, uh, use strict uh, from Mobix, and once you do this, uh, it will actually throw an error if you try to do to do this, because it will say, "Okay, you tried to change the store, but you are not in an action." So, what you will need to do here. Is, is this, so you'll, you'll need to mark every function where you're using, where you're changing your state with an action. Uh, this has two advantages. One is you can't change any, something by accident because 
if you change something here in the render functions, it, it will say, no, you can't do that. And the second uh, thing is an action is actually like a transaction in a de database context. So if you change multiple things, it will actually, actually bundle them. So it will make sure it doesn't re-render something five times if you change something five times in your function. So this will al also benefit your performance. Uh, and for the end, so two things to keep keep in mind when using Mobix. One, you are not allowed to add new properties to an object without using extend observable because Mobix will not know, not know about them and it, they won't be observable. So Mobix will not track them. Uh, the second uh, uh, thing to keep keep in mind here is that Mobix wraps your objects or values with its own object. And because of that, an observable array is not action, actually an array. And if you are using uh, is array uh, from, uh, uh, if you are using array is uh, from uh, JavaScript or you are using Glodash or you are using instance of array, it will actually return false. But you, you can either use 2JS, we can use uh, Mobix 2JS function to actually return it to an array, which won't be observable at that point, or you can use Mobix is array helper to check that. Uh, and another thing to note is you shouldn't be afraid to use observers. So uh, the more observers you have, the better performance will be. And the same goes for the observable values. So the company that created Mobix, uh, it's called Mendix, uh, their, the, their product they are developing has 200,000 observable values at any point and they don't have any performance issues because Mobix is smart enough to not update something that it's not needed. Uh, so scale, scaling Mobix. Uh, Mobix can be scaled quite easily I think because it's, it can be object oriented so you can keep the same, same mindset that you would use in some other uh, even languages, not only frameworks. Uh, there's a list of best practices you can use. You can use strict mode and actions to, to make it harder to make mistakes. And you can use some helper libraries. So for instance, there's Mobix React DevTools uh, with which you can track what changes and you can even uh, click on a, a, a component and it will give you a list of all the properties and objects that depend uh, on which the component depends. So if anything from the, this list changes, the component will be re-rendered automatically. Uh, there are some structure libs, uh, I, I'll call them structure libs, since Mobix is really unopinionated, so you can do pretty much everything without it. It's a little har harder to scale it if you don't know what you, how you want to s uh, structure your app. So there are some libraries that give you that, that I would say force that opinion on you. So the libraries define some structure and if you use, it, uh, use the libraries, uh, they will force you to have a certain structure, which is probably a good thing. So uh, since we started using Mobix quite early, uh, there's, there was a really uh, small ecosystem. So we actually created uh, two libraries for our, our own needs, but we open source them. One is the collection store, which is a more generic library. So it has a collection which ha can have multiple models. It supports relationships and a lot of different stuff. And another library we built on top of it is JSON API store, which has some JSON API specific stuff. So uh, it supports uh, pagination, fetching the data, updating the data. And at this point, it's pretty much uh, completely compatible with JSON API spec. And uh, we are using this in uh, production now. Uh, but as uh, the usage of Mobix grew, there were some other libraries. So for instance, there's Mobix State 3, which is actually made by the Mobix authors. Uh, it's, it, the version 1.0 will be released really soon, but they are just um, finishing up the documentation. And why it's interesting is because it supports snapshots, replays, JSON patches. 
which by themselves are not maybe that interesting, but what they allow you is to support time travel. So it, they give you the same features Mobix does. And for, uh, uh, you can even use Redux DevTools with uh, Mobix State 3. So they give, uh, Mobix State 3 exposes you all the actions, all the state changes. Uh, and there's Mobix React forms to deal with, for dealing with uh, forms. Uh, I didn't use it personally, but it looks really interesting, and it even has dedicated dev tools for it. Uh, and if you want to use a combination of stat state and mobix, you can do it, uh, but there's even a better way. So you can uh, mark your state as of the component as observable, and you can use it as as that as as such. So you can mark it as observable, you mark your component as observer, and you can increase your counter however you want. Uh, a, note, a note here is that you shouldn't use, use set state at this point, because if you call set state, uh, this will stop being observable. But in order to avoid this, you, you can call this something else, like uh, component states, and you won't have that issue. And the, here are some resources on both of them. So the official documentations are quite good. And if you, uh, Mobix has a good 10 minutes tutorial with, with uh, live coding. And both of them have excellent free courses on Egghead. And the courses were created by, by the library creators. So it, they are really detailed and good. they have good structure. And that's it. Since we are out of time, we uh, we can talk about this more later. Thanks.